Acts 28, starting at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. And the word of God reads, once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us, all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper, driven out by the heat, mm, fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. Boy, perception is a cold thing. For though he escaped from the sea of the goodness, I mean, goddess, justice has not allowed him to live. Verse 5. But Paul shook. Ooh, when he was talking about that tone, he leaped in my spirit. The Bible says, but Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him. Uh oh, the people expected him. The people expected him, I'm going to say it one more time, the people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time, look at your neighbor and say, keep waiting. Who oh my God, and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a God. Father, thank you for the few minutes that I have. Speak to your people, Lord. Father God, we just celebrated a holiday, Father God, that has to do with Thanksgiving. So, Lord, I just pray, Father God, that each person had an opportunity, Father God, to enjoy their families, their loved ones, Father. I pray, Father God, that your people, Father God, is charged up for the next run and the next season as we prepare to close out 2017. As I've been trained, Father God, how you end the year is how you start the year. So, Father God, as we get ready, Father God, to move into the last and final month, Oh my God, if the Lord delay is coming to 2017, Father God, there are some things that we need to take care of, Father God, so we won't drag mess into 2018, Lord. So I thank you for the freedom to be able to deliver your word. Save someone's soul. Save someone's soul. Restore someone, Father God, that has walked away. Father God, you have brought each and every person together for a time such as this to hear this specific word. No one is above this word. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Paul was a faithful witness. As we know that Dr. Luke uh, is the one that wrote the book of Acts. Something about a doctor. They're so smart. You know, they write all of the, <laughs> they write a little bit different. If you read the gospel of Luke, my God, his writings, my God, and verbiage is quite different from Matthew, Mark. And the other writers, my God. But I thank God for Dr. Luke. And Dr. Luke got to witness some things firsthand. Paul was a faithful witness going off of Christ church and family to the life change and power of the Lord. From the day Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, that's Acts the ninth chapter, when Paul had an encounter. Something we familiar with over here going off of Christ with God and it changed his whole life. Oh, my God. Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus until he gave his life to the Lord. He was a faithful witness. Mm. And he ended up giving his life to the Lord in Rome. Paul was a mighty preacher, y'all, of the gospel of grace. This passage that we have before us uh, finds Paul on his way to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Paul would spend years as a prisoner in Rome. And he would eventually lay down his life as a faithful sacrifice or martyr for the Lord. Paul is helping gather wood, church, I'm going somewhere, for the fire. As he lay, lays his bundle of sticks in the fire, a viper comes out of the wood and bites Paul. Hanging onto his hand, Paul, apparently the, snake was, apparently the snake was sluggish due to the cold and the rain, but it quickly revived when it got close to the fire. Cold because of the rain. Sluggish because I'm not reading. Sluggish because I'm not praying. Sluggish. But when it got close My God. to the fire, good, that which was sluggish, mm, that which was lethargic, that which was lukewarm, I'm talking to somebody up in the church. Yeah. Oh my God, when you get close to the fire, 
You come alive. Mm. Paul shook the snake off. Oh, my God. At the point. Mm. And the people waited to see what would happen to him. I want to talk. I want, I want to point out the snakes Paul faced at Malta that night. I want to encourage you to recognize the snakes that can latch on to your life. So the title of this sermon is Shake It Off. Yeah. Oh, my God. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Shake It Off. My God, this is a powerful thought that God has given me as I begin to formulate this thought, my God. But even though we just celebrated Thanksgiving and we're moving into, my God, Christmas time, my God, there's still some things, my God, that we all have to shake off. Some of our things may be the same, but some of us, my God, got other things that need to be shook off. And so do me a favor one more time and look your neighbor in the eyeballs and say, shake it off. Shake it off. So point number one, let's get to it. Shake off the crisis. Paul is dealing with a crisis right now. My God, a viper has bit him. Y'all know a viper, my God, is one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. And so, my God, Paul was working. I thank God for Paul. Pastor Dean, you always talking about Paul was a tent maker, even though he, he fathered a lot of churches, my God, and wrote over half of the New Testament, my God. Paul always kept him a job, and he always found himself working. He just didn't depend on the church, my God, to take care of him. Who, my God, but he was out there working. And just to, for the sake of time, and you go to back, Acts, the 27th chapter, when it talks about how Paul didn't come, my God, through shipwreck and so forth, my God, which brings us up to the story. Where we at today? He come through a major crisis. God told him in the book of Acts, my God, that he will stand before Rome. I mean, go to Rome. But on his way to Rome, Paul had to encounter a whole lot of trials and tribulations. What am I saying? My God, God has showed you through visions. God has told you. God has prophesied. God has confirmed in your life that you're going to do great things for the kingdom. But I guarantee you that each and every one of you, my God, if the assignment is bigger than you, you're going to encounter a whole lot of trouble and turbulence, my God, in order to do that what God has called you to do. Paul was going to stand before Rome, but he came through on broken pieces. <laughs> oh, my God, he came through, my God, through a major storm to get to where he was going. You're going to have to go through some storms to reach your destination. You're going to have to shake some stuff off if you're going to reach your destination. Y'all better stay with me, my God. And so Paul is dealing with a crisis in point number one. Verse three says, as Paul gathered an arm full of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake driven out by the heat bit him on the hand. What am I saying right there? My God, it was cold. It was raining. And the snake was in the bushel, the bush, uh, the bushels of sticks and whatnot. And long, my God, as them, the, the, them sticks in that bushel, my God, was away from the fire, the snake, my God, wasn't bothering nobody. You didn't even know he was there. But as Paul was out there working, as Paul was out there gathering, oh my God, be careful what you're gathering because you might gather. <laughs> I said, be careful what you're out here gathering because you might be gathering some snakes. As long as you're lukewarm and lethargic and picking and choosing when you're going to go to church, when you're going to read, when you're going to pray, you'll never know there's snake, my God. But I promise you, my God, if you're on fire for God, oh my God, my God, if you got something going on with you and God, my God, I promise you, oh my God, oh my God, fire would always expose the snakes in your life. So Paul is gathering, Paul is gathering, he's working, he's working, he's working, and while he's gathering, my God, he gathered up some bushel, my God, and as he began to go to the fire, uh-oh, now that what he didn't know was there, that what was concealed, the fire made it revealed. Yeah. That which was concealed, when he got to the fire, it became revealed. As long as you fall in God like Peter from a distance, my God, ain't nothing going to be revealed. But the closer you get to God, that what is in you, my God, oh my God, that what is following you, that what is trailing you, that what is latching on to you, my God, it's not going to be revealed until you get back to the fire. And so to a real Christian, I've always told y'all, fire is a good thing to a real Christian. Because you need fire to purify you. God likens our faith, my God. My God, he's put our faith on, in the fire so it can be pure. The pure and hotter the fire, my God, the pure the faith is. And so we need some fire in our life. But Paul is dealing with a crisis. Paul was bitten. It was a moment of real crisis. Anybody ever dealt with a crisis in the church? Let me see your hands. Come on, let me know who I'm talking to right now. Oh my God. Oh my God, shake off the lethargy. Has anybody ever been through a real crisis? That snake was a poisonous and could have killed him. Of course, God took care of the poison. We know that. But here's the problem. The crisis came when Paul was engaged in doing good. 
After the episode on the ship where he saved everyone's life, my God, in the book of Acts, the 27th chapter for the circuit time, 21 through 25, Paul told him, my God, an angel came to Paul and said, my God, that everything's going to be okay. All as long as the men stay on board, everybody will live. Anybody that jump, off, I mean, go overboard will die. What did God show me right there? I see, a lot of y'all think that when you're going through trials, the first thing our flesh want to do is disconnect. The first thing our flesh want to do is go into hiding. The first thing you want to do is they don't understand me. My God, I don't want nobody to want to ask me what's going on. So what I do, I go home, my God, and I lock myself up in the room. A man left to himself is doomed for destruction. So if I'm already struggling in my mind, I'm already defeated in my mind. Why would I go home, my God, and be left to myself? Because all I got is myself. If I'm already defeated, if I'm already defeated in my mind, so that's the, exactly what the enemy wants you to do. Is jump overboard. My man, my man of God told me, my God, my God, the key to getting through a storm is to go through the storm. The key to getting through a storm is to go through the storm. You never stop in the midst of a storm. A lot of you quit the first sign of opposition. A lot of you stop in the midst of the storm. You ain't supposed to stop. Keep going. Eventually, you're going to make it to the other side. Storms don't always last, baby. Sooner or later, my God, some good times is coming. But many of us, my God, stop in the midst of a storm. And we jump overboard. But God, an angel told Paul, my God, tell everybody stay on board. Everybody that jump overboard is going to die. But if they stay on board in the midst of the storm, my God, they shall live. Because God gave a promise to Paul in the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, said you will stand and you will make it to Rome. So couldn't nobody die. Because the man of God was on board. I don't know what would have happened if the man of God would have been on board. But because God had an assignment on Paul's life, Bishop, my God, he was going to go to Rome. And he was going to stand before the king and proclaim the gospel, my God. And so couldn't nobody die. Right. All it takes is, oh, my God, I can preach on the power of one. All God needs is one man. <laughs> oh, militia, you listen to me. 276 men was on that boat, my God. And because Paul had an assignment, Paul had a destination, God told Paul that you will make it to Rome and you will stand before the king and be a witness. Everything that was connected to Paul, everything that was in his spirit could not die. Who the enemy couldn't touch it, my God, because God gave me. Who am I talking to in the church, my God? That's why it's good to be around people that's in the will of God. That's why it's good to be around people that's going hard for God. Who that's living something, quit hanging around people that's praying. Oh my, oh my God, you ain't even got to be in the wheel. If you just follow somebody that's in the wheel, the favor that's on my life gonna get on you. I, who am I? Is anybody dusty? Anybody dusty in the church right now? Oh my God. What hurts us is that we get jealous of people that's in the wheel. We get envy. It's a shipwreck and jump overboard. We get envy because God promotes her, promotes him. Because God left you in the storm a little bit longer. She probably learned her lesson. He probably learned his lesson, so his time is up. God is the one I taught you that controls the length and time of the storm. And so some of you have to stay longer because you ain't learning your lesson. And so you get envy. So God snatched one out and leave you in. Now you're envy. That's good, Pastor. Yeah. Am I talking to the right crowd? Let's go a little deeper. Paul could have demanded special treatment, y'all, but he's out there working and serving. One thing about a leader, they don't never just sit up and just bark orders. Paul, my God, who, my God, is the man. Real talk, two-thirds, over half of the New Testament. He could have demanded his rights as an apostle. But instead, he led by example. A good leader always lead by example. As I teach y'all, y'all know a leader never asks the people to do something that they don't do. See what I say? So he's out there working. He said, man, I can sit up here and make y'all bring me my food and do everything. Y'all only alive because of me. He could have got prideful. He could have said it is what it is. I'm finna chick kick back and chill. But instead, Paul got out there and started working. And while he was working, he gathered something. I want you to understand something. Just because you're doing good battle for God, don't think that you ain't going to go through nothing. Just because people's lives are being affected and things are changing in people's lives, my God, don't think that you're not going to go through nothing. Truth be told, when you're on the front line for God, doing good, doing, doing good business and good battle for the Lord, you the one that the enemy is terrified of. The people that's lethargic like that snake, the one that's backed over there, my God, making excuses why she or he can't do nothing. Why you or he or she can't soar. Come on, somebody. He got, the devil ain't worried about you because you in church today. Two, three days after Thanksgiving. Thank God you're here. But if you ain't here, my God, to get connected to the fire. You're not here to allow God to affect your life, to go out there and make a difference. You, yeah, you did God. Yeah, you went to church. Praise be to God. But the devil ain't. Amen. So Paul was working and he was serving. 
and still a time of crisis came, y'all. What am I trying to say? I want you to shake some stuff off because even in the midst of what you're going through, even in the midst of doing good battle, and we are doing good battle in this church, many, many lives are being affected in this ministry. That does not shield us from going through trials and tribulations. We seem to believe that our faithful service to the Lord is some kind of shield against trouble in our life. This is just, oh my God, th that is just not so, y'all. As Job, troubles are a part of everyday life. If you write down Job 14.1, this is what he said, New Living Translation. How frail is humanity? How short is life? How full of trouble? How full of trouble? If anybody ever dealt with some trouble, is anybody dealing with any level of trouble? Job warns us and lets us know, my God, who my God, Willie, depending on what translation, a man born of a woman is full of trouble. Oh, my God, the Bible says Jesus learned obedience to the things that he suffered. Jesus learned obedience to the things that he suffered. Paul, the same writer, Bishop said, all those that desire to live godly, Mother Martha, shall suffer persecution. What am I trying to say? Some of the things, my God, that you discouraged about, some of the things, my God, that's, uh, that has latched on to you, my God, you got to shake it off, my God, because all of us got to go through stuff. Yes, we have made mistakes. Yes, my God, we was free from that. Now we didn't got entangled with that again. That's okay. Shake it off. Somebody stand on your feet and just shake. Come on. Come on, stand on your feet and shake, my God. Shake, my God. Get a paradigm shift in your mind. Get a paradigm shift in your mind. Because all of us got something. Stand up, son, and shake it off, my God, at this church, my God. Shake it off, my God. Come on, shake, shake, shake. My God, shake off depression. Shake off the addiction. Shake it off, my God. Shake off frustration. Shake it off, my God. Get it up off of you, my God. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. I know we just celebrated Thanksgiving, but a lot of us got stuff on it. We got snakes attached to us right now. Oh, my God. Look at this right here. When trouble comes, it can derail our faith. Oh, my God. When trouble comes, it can derail our faith. Oh, my God. It can derail our faith. My God. Do like Paul did. and Put your faith in the promises of the Lord. Put your faith in the promises of the Lord. What did the Lord say? God told Apostle Paul that you will make it to Rome. But he made it to Rome through a lot of turbulence. I'm trying to help you, church. I just want to teach you, church. If you go back, and I encourage you to go back and read Acts chapter 27 and see that everything that Paul had to come through to make it to Rome, it's going to cost you something. First, to hear a job well done, it's going to cost you something to dominate this earth. It's going to cost you to overcome your addictions. It's going to cost you, my God, to come up out of that. You're going to have to pay a price. Ain't nothing finna be given to you for free, baby. You're going to have to come through a whole lot of trials and tribulations. Ooh, my God, if I had time. Mm, I'm just trying to help you. My God. Mm. Paul put his faith in the promises of the Lord. In, in our times of trouble, we have some very precious promises. Write this down. We have his presence. Write these down, church. In the midst of what you're going through right now and what you're going to go through in the future, you and I, I and you, has God's presence. That's Hebrew 13, 5. Don't love money, but be satisfied with what you have. My God, Pastor Larry taught us, my God, about being right on the money. Don't let money become your God, church. My God, some of us, my God, has found ourselves getting in a lot of trouble because we are not satisfied and grateful and thankful. Even though we just celebrated Thanksgiving, we ain't thankful for the things that God has blessed us with. If you read Matthew 6, he said he will supply all of your needs. If you look, my God, over 95% of this church, I promise you, your needs is met. You have gas, you have water, you have electric, you got a car, you got some clothes, you got some food. He promised that he would take care of all that stuff. See, I'm saying you have that. Now, when we have a little bit of excess, my God, he give us some desires of our heart, count it as a blessing, my God. But when you are ungrateful, when you are unthankful, my God, you fall into all kind of other sins, my God. But God said in his word, my God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's his presence. No matter what you go through, I don't care what, you didn't, what mistakes you done made. I don't care what mistakes you made on your way to church. My God, God's presence is with you. God loves you. He wants it all come to repentance. My God, I'm telling you, church, today. My God, I'm talking to everything up off in there. No matter what mistakes we have all made and gone made, God's presence is still with us. God still loves you. And God is still able to restore, heal, and deliver you. I don't care what you're facing. I'm talking to some people up off in there. I don't care what you're facing. God is able. God is able. 
But you got to be willing, my God, to shake it off, baby. You got to shake off that poisonous snake. Some of the people, places, and things that you are going is vipers, baby. You keep attaching yourself to poisonous snakes. You keep going back to the vomit. That's another poisonous snake. You keep going back to him after God then delivered you from him. You go back to him every time. God delivered you from that viper. God and bought you out of debt, my God, and you find yourself lusting after stuff. Now you're right back in debt. Viper. Get your mind off of just a snake and think about the things, my God. Oh, my God, that our flesh is lusting after them. They vipers, they snakes, my God. And they imprison us and they poison us. A lot of us dying internally. Oh, we look good external, but we dying internal. Oh, my God, we have a form of godliness, but we dying internally. The church is dying. I asked my father last Friday, what is, the, what is the state of the church? And the church is in a bad place, but he said we will recover. So it's my job through the spirit to make sure that I help us recover. Yeah. We're dying in yeah. yeah. Too many vipers is connected to our life. We're making decisions, my God, that's poisoning us. We're joining ourselves with things that God said, no, that's not beneficial. It's good to the flesh, but it's dangerous. It's poison. Shake it off. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, give God a hand, church. Come on, give God a hand. Oh, my God. Mm. So you got his presence. Look at this right here. I, and he says, I will never abandon you. We have his victory. We have victory. Write that down. First Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thank God he gives us victory over S-I-N and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I preached that before, but it says through. That means you got to be properly connected. That means you got to be in position. Can I help you, church? I know I love you. But just because you're here don't mean you going to have victory too. It's going to take more than you showing up. You got to get in God. Let me put some scripture on it. You got to do John 15, write that down, one through five. He said, I'm the vine and you are the branch. You got to get connected. Oh, my God, coming to church ain't going to do nothing for you but keep you sick and deceived. Oh, my God, because you think thinking church is the answer. Church ain't the answer. Christ is the answer. That's why I told y'all we don't do church, we do Christ. You get to Christ, I promise you that addiction, that marriage problem, that financial problem, that healing that you need, I don't care what you need. Whatever snake got to go when you get to the presence of God. Yes, sir. Victory is in God, through God, but you got to be properly connected. A lot of us trying to overcome hangups and habits. You're trying to overcome it. Flesh birth flesh, spirit birth spirit until you properly connected. Ah, until you rightly divine it. Until you position yourself up under this uh, the umbrella of the kingdom, my God. You're going to continue the struggle yeah. mm -hmm. until you fall in line and that thing my God is vexing you that thing that is troubling you that thing that's making you cry right now when you bring it and submit it to God I promise you he'll deliver you overnight oh he'll reverse the curse if God reverse the, if God reverse the curse on anybody's life in here but you got victory oh thank you Holy Ghost you got victory through Christ victory through Christ oh the men of God should say let's walk We are walk. Long as we're walking, we're walking. Bishop was saying, but when you stop walking, I keep walking. Yeah. What am I saying? Some of you have stopped walking. But guess what? The kingdom got to keep walking. The kingdom don't stop because you stop. The kingdom don't stop because you get a party pity. The kingdom don't stop because you get discouraged. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That means, my God, I'm going to be there when you get tired of messing up. When you get sick and tired and you ready for me to step in, I got the key. I, I got the victory for you. When you get tired of doing it by yourself, when you quit depending on everybody horizontal, start depending on me vertical, I will take care of it, Shannon. All you got to do is give it to God. And you got to show up, stone number one. You got to show up and you got to be consistent, my God. And then when you come in here and get fed, you got to go out there and do something with it, baby. Come on, come on now. You got victory through Christ. Coming to church ain't in Christ. Yes, Lord Jesus. I'm only able to stay clean and sober because I'm doing it through Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm only able to have victory financially because I'm doing it through Christ. Yeah. You get a peace of mind through Christ. I'm trying to push you yeah. to the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, church ain't going to do it. That's why a lot of people are turned off on church because when they go through stuff, the first thing they say, Mother's and George, I got to go to church. And when they come to church, they ain't got no power to help them. And so now they got a belief system, a perception about church. You never should have came to church. You should have came to Christ, baby. Yeah. Come to Christ. <laughs> Am I talking to the right crowd? Oh my God, there ain't no crisis, my God, that you're going through that God can't fix. Write this down. You got his power. You got his presence, victory, and now you got his power. 
Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask our work. I mean, I think his power that work in us. So in prayer last night, I said, God, we move every obstacle that would hinder your power from operating in my life. Obstacles hinder the glory. We move, shake off everything that would interfere with the power. Some of the things that God has called you to, he called all of us to greatness. But it's going to take some power. It's going to take more than your education and your degree, baby. It's going to take more than your fine looks and what kind of car you drive. It's going to take more than what you got real for on that side. Well, you need the power of God. Oh, my God. Y'all know my saying. You can't plug in and then unplug. Plug in and then unplug. Oh, my God. As long as that, mm, that cord stay plugged into that socket, it gets its power. But the minute Bishop, my God, it unplugged, it, it become powerless. We got too many powerless Christians in here. And I'm foreign to those, oh, my God, who ain't got no power. I'm strange. Yeah. 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 Alpha male will be strange to a lot of men who don't understand power and focus. Alpha male have very little compromises in the walk when it comes to truth. Ooh, very little compromises in their walk when it comes to truth. People that got a lot of compromises don't want to walk with an alpha male. It don't take all that. No, oh, no. It don't take all that, man. All I gotta do is go to church, man. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. They want to walk with a real alpha. Yes, Lord. Power comes from God. Power has nothing to do with how loud I talk, how loud I preach, how many tongues I speak in. They ain't got nothing to do with that. That's, right. That's not the power I'm talking about. That's good teaching. I taught y'all and I continually teach y'all and will continually teach y'all. Power has everything to do with, say it again, lifestyle. lifestyle. You got some lifestyle, baby, you got some power. Because where there's lifestyle at, trust me, the hand of God is on your life, baby. Trust me, the favor of God is on your life. Trust me, the favor and the presence and the victory is on your life when you're walking, my God, and living something. Point number two, let's move. Shake off criticism. I like this one. Shake it off, baby. Some of you been criticized now because you go to going off of Christ church. Why you that with Juju? That's a fun one. That's all right. Shake it off. Tell me you're free. That's why you got to be free. Yeah, I didn't get free till I got with him. I didn't get free till I got connected to the God. Oh, my God. Man of God, Gabe, talk to me about you, man of God. He's blown away with tears in his eyes standing right there, baby, because of your life, baby. He sat right there and broke down and started crying, baby, because he said, oh, my God, look at his life today. Oh, my God. Let the people hate on you. Shake it off. Yeah, yeah, shake it off. Yeah, Come on, yeah. shake it off. Some of y'all got some haters and you won't shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah. If you got some haters, shake it off. Y'all too dignified for me. I need to go back to Greenwood Christmas Center where we going hard, bitch. Yeah, what all started that. Come on, Tony. Mm-hmm. Let's deal with this. Verse 4 says, the people of the island saw, talking about the viper, hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt, though he escaped the sea, that's in 27, Acts, justice will permit him not to live. As soon as Paul was bitten by the snake, the people of the island, watch this church, let me read this, began to criticize him. God showed me, just because a person come down to the altar at the end of service, some is coming because they need to reconnect, but some people come down to the altar because they're grateful and they understand. That's why, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's why, listen to me, church, listen to me. That's why when the Spirit of God is nudging on you, when the Spirit of God is dealing with you, when something, oh my God, that God has already said, yes. oh my God, and the bishop or the pastor call for an altar call, you do yourself a disservice when you sit in your seat, when the Spirit of God is pulling you to the altar. Just because a person come to the altar does not mean that they are struggling with some level of sin. Right. See what I'm trying to say? Which is we all have sin. See what I'm trying to say? But sometimes people will come to the altar just because they're thankful. What am I saying? Some of you self-sabotage, won't move, won't go deeper in the things of God. Oh, my God, because you are so worried about people criticizing you. My God, if you get up at your seat and make your way down to the altar. Girl, what you going down there for? Don't take all that. Don't do that in the Baptist church. I come from there. You don't have to see that. And see, you listen to the criticism and you stay sick and you stay bound because you more focus on what people think than what God think. I'm trying to help you, church. And a lot of us is bound and sick. Because we can't handle the criticism. We let the criticism speak more than the purpose and the promises of God. 
Oh my God, I shook it off, baby. It kept pushing. Juju from the start of the church. How you gonna oh, they tread everything? Ah, oh, that boy don't get me started, my God. Shake it off, and I kept pushing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Operating in purpose. Some of you, my God, can't move to the next level, and you're gonna stay down there with the chickens. I've been trying to get y'all to come up with the eagle, but you can't soar because you're too focused on criticism what people think about you. And when you focus on that, you become powerless Christians and defeated Christian. When God said we got a victory through Christ, am I talking to the right crowd? They were very suspicious people on this island, and they assumed the viper bite bit Paul because of some evil in his life. People going to talk. Let them talk. People got all manner of things to say about you, your walk, your marriage, your children, whatever. Let them talk. You got to shake off criticism if you're going to soar. You will never maximize your potential. You will never experience the level of freedom and victory that I'm standing up here in until you learn how to shake off criticism. Some of your hardest critics will be those closest to you. Jesus said, your worst enemies, your worst critics, your closest vipers is right there amongst you. That's why if you got fire, they can't stay too long. Yeah. Woo, my God, if you got some fire, even those that's closest to you, my God, that bleed the same bloodline you bleed, can't stay close to you. Hey, Uncle Juju, hey, Auntie Tiki, my God, but they gone. Can't stay close to the fire. Mm, mm, mm. You can't move higher if you focus on criticism. Let me give you this and teach you. Ooh, they just assume because he was bitten by a snake. See, that was an outward sign that you're cursed. Think about, I can go deep with it, but I ain't got time. Hanging on the cross, cursed. Bit, cursed by a poisonous snake. The seed didn't kill you, but the snake got you. Ooh, the seed didn't kill you, but the snake got you. So they assume, I'm going somewhere, that this man here is a murderer. People just assume all kind of things about you. He was being punished, they assume, because he was a wicked man. People are often quick to criticize what they don't understand, what they see and what they hear, what they see and what they hear. G.F. Walker said in the book, Bishop, an alpha male is not going to listen to what somebody got to say about their spiritual leader. That's what the book say. He's not going to lend his ear, my word, to what somebody got to say about the bishop about the pastor. He's not going to formulate a perception or opinion off of inaccurate information. Too many of us right now are wounded and scarred because we have formulated perceptions and opinions and built a belief system that's inaccurate. Some of us, my God, cannot move forward because we have built a wall of wrong beliefs concerning the kingdom. Oh, my God. And we have built walls to keep the enemy out, but we have built those same walls to keep in prison our own selves. And our belief system is messed up. Discipleship too, go to class. We have built, my God, walls and we are in prison to wrong beliefs. People have misrepresented the kingdom. People have said things that was inaccurate. Who a lot of us sitting up in here, my God, right now, my God, with all type of stuff that's been inaccurate. All type of stuff, my God, that wasn't taught right, preached right. I thank God for training. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, my God, people will criticize. The alpha male, my God, will not listen. You can't talk about his leader. I said, God, give me some alpha mate females. I sure did. I switched it. God, give me some alpha females. I know they are. I'm trying. It's a real one. Ooh, my God. Watch this. Let me move on. I'm almost through. Is this helping anybody so far? Come on, y'all talk to me, church. Is it helping you? Okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. Some of you have, some have you have, some of you have been an object of criticism from others. I was reading the one-year Bible the other day. Bishop asked back, he said, y'all on the one-year Bible? I said, yes, we are. Since we started the church, we've been on the one-year Bible. He the one put us on this. Remember this? I thank God for the one-year Bible. Go out and get you a one-year Bible. If you need one, ask Kendall and she'll get you a one-year Bible. This is daily contact. It'll give you an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, a Psalms and a Proverbs. And you can go, I re, I've been reading the Bible since 2003. Well, I started in prison in 98, but I read the Bible every year from 19, 1998 to present. Every year. Every year. Wow. Every year. As soon as this January 1 hit, I start over and reread. Full of the words, keep you in the fire. 
So I can walk away from the pool pit and just flow. Don't need no notes. Fool. Line upon line, precept upon precept, don't go on a rabbit trail and still come right there back to the, to the word. People will criticize you. Look at this right here. Let me give you some substance. Let's look what it says in Peter. Mm. Let me give y'all this right quick. Hold on, give me a second. I need to give y'all this. Christ who suffered for you is your example. Follow his steps. He never sinned and he never deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. I want to give y'all this too. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. People, when you're trying to do the right thing, y'all, in First Peter, uh, first Peter, that'll be chapter three, verse four, I believe it says, of course, your former friends are very surprised when you no longer join them in the wicked things they do. And they say evil things about you when you no longer do the things you used to do with the vipers. They start criticizing you and talking about you. When you're no longer doing those things of the flesh and y'all know what they is, people is going to talk about you. This is what Peter said. Of course, your former friends are very surprised. Ooh, who am I talking to? When you no longer join them in wicked things, they do. And they say evil things about you. All because you don't do the things you used to do. You got to be able to shake off criticism, church. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Israel criticized Moses for everything that went wrong. They murmured when they was hungry, thirsty, and tired. Even Jesus, church, faced criticism from his enemies. Jesus, my God, our Lord and Savior, was called a blasphemer in Matthew 9 and 3. If you are not careful, the criticism you face from others will cause you to become defeated. Oh, my God. The criticism you face from others will cause you to become defeated. Right here. The enemies, I, whoever, I teach you, whoever get the mind, get the life. Yeah. And so everything that you're dealing with, the devil's after one thing, your mind. Because your mind and faith is connected. See, I'm trying to say, you know, faith, you sure ain't going to walk for Christ. You ain't going to study, you ain't going to read, you ain't going to pray, you ain't going to come to church, you ain't going to do give, you ain't going to try to live right if you ain't got no faith that this thing works. See, I'm trying to say. And so the enemy is after your mind. A lot of us today, even though we celebrated Thanksgiving, is defeated mentally. That's why we don't have the presence, that's why we don't have the victory. Come on, somebody. Defeat it. Criticism will defeat you. This would have happened. This would have happened, y'all. Oh, my God. There are times when you and I deserve the criticism we received. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Thank you for the criticism, but it's a good criticism. Bishop told us, he said, anytime your wife in a pastor's meeting, I brought it up. He said, I said, my wife, I always want to talk to me at the church. <laughs> Lady, she ain't been saying that I feel good. <laughs> but he's told us in the pastor's meeting in his office, my God, he said, if your wife, because he know my wife, been knowing her for years. He told the pastor, if your wife is, I can't remember exact word, critiquing, he said, that's a good thing. He said, because I know it's what he called a tiki. If what she's saying to you is for your best interest. Yeah. So he said, it's beneficial to you pastors to receive from your wife. Especially if you know they mean well. And I know that one means me well. Now, I'm sorry, men, if you don't, you're like, boy, no, she don't mean me well. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just telling you, my God, because I know that one means me well. If she say something to me, I know it's for my best interest. I know it is because she ain't trying to hurt me. She has been helping me for 30 years. I'm almost through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we need to be able to receive criticism. Oh, my God. There are times when we are wrong and we need to be shown our errors. Church, please understand that as I get ready to come to an end. Uh, uh, there are times when you and I, the Bible says a man that, that accepts constructive criticism, it will prosper the soul, mind, will, and emotion. But to reject constructive, constructive criticism, you condemn your own self. When somebody is telling you something and you know it's right and they're doing it in the right spirit and you know that they mean well, if you receive it, it's going to prosper you. 
But to reject it, you are condemning your own self. God may have sent him or her to you to tell you that because he's trying to move you to another level. But you keep stiff on and you keep rejecting, you keep shunning the very people that God brought in your life to help you. Oh, my God. And so when you and I reject constructive criticism, we condemn ourselves. We hurt ourselves. My God. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, I love to teach the people. There are times when we are trying to do our best and we still are criticized, misunderstood, and misrepresented. You're trying to do your best and you still, come on, who am I talking to? My God, criticized, misunderstood, and misrepresented. If you are not careful, church, criticism will make you want to quit. How many of y'all, let's, let's be honest, how many of y'all because of criticism and defeat quit on something? Come on, let me see your hands. If you started something, you quit because you got discouraged. It could be school. It could be whatever. Amen. See, see, you got to guard against criticism. Criticism is a viper, y'all. Criticism is a strong viper that has caused a lot of people, even pastors. The man of God taught me, my God, a thousand pastors a year close their churches, step down from the pulpit, and walk away from the office of a pastor. Can't handle the criticism. Can't handle, my God, the responsibility. Oh, my God, can't deal. And so, therefore, they go home. My God, they preach to the mass and go home and be ready to commit suicide. Can't handle. My God said, oh, yeah, that was a good message. Yeah, but the other one talking about, yeah, but you cheat on your wife. So I'm, I'm just telling you. Somebody praised you. Another man said you cheat. Another man said you steal it from the church. How did you get that car? Well, you just stole it from the church. He can't deal with the criticism. Yeah, you got a good church, my God. God was blessing, my God. Yeah, but look at this person in your leadership. Look what she did. Look what he did. You can't handle the criticism, so they closed the church doors. Pray for your leaders, man. People that was called to the ministry, my God, because of criticism. Self-defeat caused them to walk away. Some of us sitting here right now, God has called all of us to do great things. Some of us, my God, has got defeated and we entered or got reconnected with addictions that we was once free from. We had it under our feet. We was free. But somewhere along the line, we got defeated from the spirit of discouragement and we went back because it's easier to go back to the familiar. The late Dr. Miles will always say, man, God, it's easier to live in chaos than it is to live in freedom. I said it's easier to live in chaos than it is to live in freedom. So a lot of people that's been locked up for a long time can't make it in society. They like to be told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And when you get out here, you got the freedom to choose. My God, you ain't got nobody telling you what to do. They can't handle it. And so they return back to the familiar. Some of you, my God, ooh, oh my God, you've been free. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You are free, and God set you free from it, from him, from that. From places, from things. But you didn't maintain your freedom. You have returned back. Because you couldn't handle your freedom. You couldn't handle the criticism. But now you have an opportunity, as I get one more point, to shake that off. And walk out your freedom. Watch this. Watch this. Numbers, write this down, chapter 11, 10 through 15. Moses heard, this is the great deliverer of Moses. Moses heard, heard all the families. This is Moses pastoring the church, y'all. Moses heard, heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents whining, and the Lord became extremely angry, y'all. Uh-oh, complaining. Complaining about everything, and the Lord became extremely yes, angry. Uh-oh, complaining, murmuring. Don't nothing make you happy, ungrateful, unthankful. And the Lord became extremely angry. Watch this. Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, watch this, y'all. Why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Listen to me, church. Have mercy on me, Moses said. What did I do? Ooh, Bishop, I heard you say this before. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? This is Moses talking to God, y'all. Listen to me. You talking about criticism, talking about being defeated. Listen to him. Over a million plus people. He ain't talking about 200. Millions. He said, God, why are you treating me your servant so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them? The land you swore to give them, their ancestors. He says, where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep whining, never satisfied. Mm. This 
happened over 2,000 years ago and it's still, oh my God, revelatory today, Bishop. The people are still complaining. They still are, are, are unsatisfied about everything. Oh my God, people talking about the Old Testament. I love preaching from the Old Testament. Yeah, you got to do is look, you got to look at the Old Testament to really understand the New Testament. Oh my God, we still complaining and whining right now. Some of you complaining and whining on your way to church this morning. And you just ate around the table with a feast and you still are. I want you free. That's why I preach to you like that. Watch this. Where am I supposed to get the meat for all of these people keep whining and saying, give us meat to eat. Moses said, can I carry all these people by myself? I thought about the 12. I ain't got to carry them by myself, Bishop. Thank you. And I'm back through for teaching, teaching me and training me. I got major, major help. And I told you, Friday, I got good, good people, Bishop. I ain't stressed out like Moses. And if I continue to follow the pattern that you laid out and that God is laying out, I won't get to that point. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, listen to me, 12 leaders. Oh, my God. Moses is in a cold-blooded situation. We understand Jethro. We understand the story. But he's in a cold situation. People are never satisfied. The eye is never fulfilled. <laughs> oh, my God. The load is far too heavy. If this is how I'm about to, you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you listening to me? Moses said, God, if I got to deal with all this whining and this complaining and this heavy load, kill me. Do me a favor and spur my misery. Moses was in a cold-blooded mental battle, y'all. God called him, raised him, protected him, and called him for a time such as this. And as the church grew, it went in at 70 in Egypt, but it came out millions. He didn't think the church was going to quadruple like that. It went in at 70 Pasadena and became millions. He said, God, if I got to go through this, kill me. Sometimes the work and the burden. That's why God called them and sent them out by two, y'all. Listen to me. He never sent the disciples out one by one. He always sent them out by two. Witness, accountability, and strength. You'll never have real victory until you learn how to walk. How can two walk together except there be an agreement? You got to learn how to solicit and ask for help. Place people around you that's gifted in areas that you're not. Don't let your self-esteem and your self-image, my God, your pride cause you, my God, to suppress the very gifts that God has put in your life to help you expand. Place people around you that can help you carry the load. Some of you are stressed out. You got to shake it off, baby, because you, oh, my God, you're too territorial. Low self-esteem. Constantly nagging, my God, to try to keep a person in prison so you can control them. Because you know if they break loose, my God, it's going to force you to make a decision. Who is the spirit of God Even on your job, you mistreat her or him because you know they just as qualified to take your position, so therefore you mishandle them. But God really brought them to you to bless you. But you're missing what you need because you're intimidated by their gifts. But their gifts came to enhance your gifts. See, y'all ain't ready for me, baby. See, y'all still think I'm from the street. And so you're still forming and pushing people that God has sunk. Divine connection, thank you, to enhance you. Thank you, Pastor Dean. Thank you for being a squad from Delaware, but you have enhanced me. You have enhanced me. I'm serious, man of God. I'm about through. You have enhanced me. You made me look at stuff from a different perspective. Me and the man of God was just sharing, fellowshipping with you. He said he was very impressed with you. My father. That means something to me. <laughs> Point number three. Let me get y'all out of here. This is the last one. You got to shake off negativity. You'll never excel. Oh, my God. Little Jason. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people envy of you, son. You're a star at Booker T. Thank you, Holy God. I just looked at you. This ain't number God. I'm moving. Don't think that the same people saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the same people talking about, uh, uh, uh. So get yourself ready. If you don't learn nothing, get yourself ready for the criticism. Even when you get to school next year, how do you after? See what I'm trying to say? Understand that criticism is a way of life, but use it to soar. Yeah. Don't let yourself get defeated and get discouraged. None of that. When you have a bad game, don't get down and go just give up. No, 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 no. Continue to soar. You control it. Don't let it control you. Yeah, that's good, Ooh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> Boy, I'm living this mess. I had to walk through it. Shake off negativity. Let's close it. Shake off negativity. 
Shake off negativity. Mm, mm, mm. Shake off negativity. Mm. Verse 6 says, the people waited for him to swell up and suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. I thought about you on this one, Barry. You followed me for 13 years. At that time, you weren't ready to walk with me. But many people are watching. Many people. That's why I thank God I'm closing. That's why I thank God for covering. He didn't ask for this. That's why I didn't have him come up and pre t say nothing. He don't need all that. He is who he is. Mm -hmm. Period. But I thank God, son. <coughs> because we have walked through criticism. He know, Juju, why are you going to that white man's church? Yeah. Then they criticized my father and said, he then came over here and stole all of the members. Some of y'all probably didn't say that. Yeah. Yeah. I say, but all he was doing is fulfilling purpose. Let me tell you something. People are sick and tired of the same old, same old. Yeah. 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 I say, when you operate in purpose, oh my God, people will flock to purpose. People will flock to prosperity. Prosperity, I'm not talking about money. Yeah. Yeah. People are sick and tired of doing the same old religious things. Yeah. Yeah. I say, but I watched him walk through negativity. I watched him walk through criticism, and I had to go through it with him because I was connected to him. Yeah. He know. Yeah. Some of you has dealt with a lot of criticism and negativity because what you over there with Juju for? Yeah, I know what he used to be. But do I got, and don't do it if you ain't, do I got five people that has been set free? <laughs> because... That's for God. Yeah. These people were sitting around watching. I'm through. And waiting for him to swell up and fall down. They expected a great fall. People are waiting on you to fall. People are waiting on some catastrophe to strike and hit going off of Christ church so they can say, I told you so. They're definitely waiting on the leader to fall so they can say, I told you he wasn't going to last. I told you he wasn't real. See, I understand that. But I don't live for them, woman of God. I live for my purpose. I live for my calling. And I thank God that I got help with my leaders. I thank God I got help with my wife. I thank God that I got oversee, oversight in my life. But if you're going to shake it off, you're going to have to get past the criticism. You're going to have to deal with the crisis. And you're going to have to overcome the negativity. Some of the negativity that you are experiencing, as I taught y'all, if you don't want people to continue to bring up your past, quit living your past. Quit talking about you going hard for Christ and yet they keep seeing you doing everything that don't represent Christ. That's why they criticize you. That's why they're talking about you and you angry and bitter at them and all they're doing is judging your fruit. You can't judge me, not they ain't, but they judge your fruit. Mm. People will say, you'll never make it. People will say and have said, You'll never make it. Sister West, they're expecting you not to make it. I see. She fake. She ain't gonna make it. We'll see how long this lasts. See, I'm right there with my people, Bishop. You taught me to have a pulse. This is ministering to the sheep. They don't expect you to make it, B. Rio, they don't expect you to make it, man. They think you, they want you to blow your brains out, man of God. Them same people that are sitting around you because you can feed them. Don't cut nothing about you, man of God. I ain't blind. Everybody ain't happy for going off of Christ and Pastor Michelle and Pastor Peoples, man of God. Everybody ain't happy for you, Michelle. A lot of people want us strung out and smoking dope. They want us defeated. I'm trying to build the church, baby. They want you defeated, Shannon and Jessica, but the devil is alive. You got victory today. Oh my God, shake it off, woman of God. And thank you for coming back to the house of the Lord. Mm. Ooh, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. I want to give you this, and I don't want to push past it because I don't want to move to the flesh. The church thing won't last is what people say. They're going to say you're going to fail. They're going to say you're going to fall. This isn't real. Some people are just waiting for you to fail. Listen to me. If you are not careful, the prophecy of the skeptics can become self-fulfilling. Listening to the people. Listening to the criticism. Not properly navigating through crisis that God really want to use to make you, purify you, build you. 
when you mishandle the crisis, it can cause defeat. Come on, somebody. Some crisis is getting you ready to be able to handle the negativity and the criticism. It's line upon line, precept upon precept. That's why you got to walk with God. The safest place is in his, the safest place is in his will. Things that God allow you and I to experience is preparing you for your next trial, your next season, your next promotion. That's why you got to learn the lessons along the way. You got to put negativity and criticism in its proper place. Are y'all listen to me? Shake it off. And you can do the external thing, but you really shake it off right here. Whoever get the mind, get the life, baby. I had to shake it off. I had to shake it off. Mama, dad, I had to shake it. I still shakes it off, but I shake it off here. I don't render. Let the wow, oh my God. Let God fight your battle. Quit rending evil for evil, my God. You don't have to try to get back at nobody. You ain't got to keep thinking, woman of God, trying to prove yourself. Let God fight your battle. You just keep walking and you keep shaking it off. That's uh, naturally, you keep shaking it off mentally in your mind and let God fight your battles. Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet.